Everyday life is very busy for me and for our family. We have four children who are very busy with their activities, and my husband and I both have pretty demanding jobs. So there is never a dull moment in our household. We play like football, we play cornhole. She likes playing with me and my friends. She's probably the most independent person besides myself that, that I know. I don't think I've ever seen Michaela slow down ever since we were kids. I think the earliest time that I recall experiencing heart issues was in high school. I was having these really interesting, almost deja vu-like symptoms. She complained of migraines, dizziness. Um, I took her to doctors. I just thought, okay, we're just dealing with stress because she's a straight A student. Uh, every sport, um, she gave it her all. And so my mom had taken me to several doctors and ultimately they all recommended wearing a heart monitor. So the external monitors that I wore early on uh, were certainly a little bit more archaic. Lots of wires, lots of contacts to place all over the body. The monitors that I wore never revealed anything significant to the doctors that prescribed them. It wasn't until much later uh, when events were recorded that I began to get information about what was really happening. When I was seven months pregnant with my youngest and I was Christmas shopping with my mom and we stopped to grab a bite to eat at a familiar restaurant and we're standing in line looking at the menu and suddenly I couldn't read the menu. I was very worried. We went right to the emergency room. All things pointed to I had had a TIA or a mini stroke. A transient ischemic attack means that there is a transient alteration in neurologic function. It could ex manifest itself as uh, slurred speech, weakness, uh, numbness. I think Michaela had um, a, a difficulty finding words. Um, and a TIA is very serious. And so, it's apt to call it a mini stroke. One of the final um, monitors that I had received following the stroke was the MCOT device. And ultimately that one did reveal an advanced heart block. So the cardiology team thought it would be a good idea to go with something more permanent so that we could begin to gather data over a longer duration of time. Because she continued to have palpitations and because her event monitor did show evidence of a non-sustained fast rhythm from the top chambers of the heart, we offered her an implantable loop recorder to allow for a longer term monitoring of arrhythmias. When they finally recommended the reveal link, it gave me a little bit of a sense of calm. The procedure took maybe 20 minutes. Got up and went to work the next day, took my kids to school. Uh, it was a very easy, painless uh, procedure. When I was little, I she had the things with all the wires under her shirt, and I had no idea what they did. And like I could feel them when I would hug her. When I hug my mom now, I can't feel any wires. Um, it's just like a normal hug. And the first time that the reveal link transmitted something serious was May of 2022, and we were on vacation in Scottsdale. We had a a good time, but you know, she wasn't feeling so great. She was a little bit off. You know, she couldn't really put her finger on it, but she definitely had communicated, you know, to me on multiple occasions that she just didn't feel right. Got a call from the cardiology office not too long after that, and it was Dr. Park on the line, and he said, your heart stopped for more than eight seconds. Eight seconds without a heartbeat is a long time. Really the only treatment option for advanced heart block is a pacemaker. With Michaela, since she is still quite young and she wasn't really pacing very frequently, we just wanted to uh, protect her from catastrophic events. I felt that the leadless pacemaker offered a lot of advantages. We felt that the micro AV was the best solution for Michaela. When I learned that the Micra was an option, I was ecstatic. I was really burdened by this idea of having a traditional pacemaker. So learning that this was an option, that something that is as small as a little fishing lure could do the same job, but be 
far less obtrusive. I recovered for a short time at the hospital and then came home. I think she kind of went back to living her everyday life uh, very quickly, and she definitely rebounded like a champ. We felt really good about getting the pacemaker, and the micro allows us both, you know, to have that peace of mind. Michaela is doing great. She really has no limitations with her life, and she has the security of knowing that she has a system that will back up her heart rate if she were to have episodes of AV block in the future. I think her quality of life is better than what she was dealing with before. She's downstairs, you know, in the in the workout room all the time. Life for Michaela today is really no different than it has been in the past. Whatever Michaela wants to do, she does. This hasn't stopped her. I feel like it's important to share my story because it may not be the traditional story of how one ends up in this place with heart devices and a care plan. If this can prevent even one person from going down a long and winding journey just to get some basic care, then it's absolutely worth it.